Ah, good. So, hello everybody. My name is Martin. Uh, I hope you can hear me, but yeah, it seems well. Uh, if you're like me, you probably tried starting a lot of personal projects and never finished them. And uh, yeah, you start all excited and full of energy, but that gradually wears off. And suddenly you realize that you cannot reach the finish line. Uh, it happened to me many times over, and curious thing actually happened on this latest personal project of mine. It's called Heroes of Bronze, and there the excitement never wore off, and I was able to get back to it every day, doing piece by piece, until finally I reached the final stages. And uh, throughout the years that I worked on it, I actually learned quite a few valuable lessons, I think, and I distilled those into 10 tips that might actually help you start and finish your own projects. Uh, but before I do that, let me actually allow me to play a few of the best shots from the project, I think, that I created over the four years. And... Ah, good. Thank you, thank you very much. So yeah, that kept me quite busy in the past four years. Uh, but before I get to the tips, let me actually talk a little bit about myself. Uh, originally, I'm a 3D artist, uh, filmmaker, and currently a cinematic director. Uh, I'm based in Prague, and one of the biggest professional projects of my career was Kingdom Come Deliverance, an RPG game from Czech Republic. Uh, and there, with a team of several talented people, we worked on cinematics. I also, if you couldn't tell, I, I work for CG Boost, where we, with uh, fellow artists, we w uh, share our workflows there. So, uh, yeah, that's it about me. But let's actually get to the tips, uh, because this brings me to the first one. In 2018, I finished working on Kingdom Come. I left the company, and I really knew that I want to create a short film, something that would be mine and I could have it like check yeah I finished a short film uh, I had lots of ideas back then you can see some of them here uh, I started doing storyboards for various fantasy projects I also had some unfinished Star Wars fun film business and uh, yeah I never never got back to it so I was considering that as well but gradually I realized that I want to work more on historical projects and I've done my fair share of medieval topic uh, but right around the time of 2018, I discovered this amazing book series about ancient Greece. And that's uh, also when I first started working with Blender, testing various scenes. And you can see, sorry, you can see that actually uh, th this first scene that I created in Blender, it was back in the time of 2.79. Uh, and I think there the UI finally started working for me. Also, I needed uh, some free alternative for Maya back then. So this is uh, my first test that I did back then in Blender, and immediately I was hooked. I knew that I want to make my, short, my future short film in Blender, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to learn all the possibilities of the software. I started working on more assets. I started creating uh, various concepts. Some of them you can see here. 
And gradually I realized I don't really want to do any, any fantasy stuff or any science fiction. I, keep, I kept coming back to this ancient Greece topic. And that's actually the first and I think most valuable tip that I'd like to share. And that's really pick something not because you think it will be popular or because it will bring you likes, uh, but something that you cannot put down, that you like burn with passion for such a project. And for me, it was this ancient Greek topic. Uh, second tip is not as much fun, uh, but I think as valuable as the first one. And that's really once you're settled with your topic, create a schedule for yourself because uh, we all think that we will be able to work on our projects in spare time, but there's never enough spare time and gradually you let the project slide and then you never finish it. So right at the beginning, I created a little schedule for myself. I knew that few days in the week I will be able to work on it. And uh, then I even increased it so that every day I did at least a little bit, a uh, little model, little texture, polished and animation. Uh, and that, that ultimately throughout several years helped me to finish such a large project. So that's tip number two. And tip number three, at the beginning of your projects, you should definitely discover new tools. Look around, see what's uh, new in the world of 3D graphics. For me, it was Blender back then, so I was learning a lot of that. Uh, but by learning Blender, I discovered uh, lots of workloads where I wasn't really good at. I knew that I cannot create character meshes, at least not very fast and uh, not very nice. And I also didn't know anything about rigging or animation and uh, also yeah, uh, creating clothing or sculpting that wasn't for me. And I knew that I will have to use some specialized tools uh, for that. I made a little research and discovered tools by Reillusion. Uh, they have this amazing combo, character creator and iClone, and there I could create my base meshes for all the characters of Heroes of Bronze. I then sent them to iClone, where it was automatically rigged, and e even though I still know nothing about animation, I was able to employ another amazing tool, and that's Rococo Suit. So I invested in that, and in combination with iClone, it gave me the possibility to record hundreds of animations that I ultimately used on the project. So, so yeah, all, all the characters moving, even women in, in the short film, it's me. Uh, that was fun. Uh, and yeah, as I mentioned, I also used Marvel's designer. I knew that I'm very bad at creating clothing, and this tool helped me a lot. Uh, be that as it may, really, at the beginning, it's best to look for your flaws, look for the weaknesses of your workflow, discover tools that will help you with that, and then, then put them into your pipeline. Discover new tools up until a point. Because once you have your pipeline ready, and here you can see, see uh, how my pipeline went, uh, once you have this sort of workflow ready and you're fairly confident that you can do with it everything you need for your project, uh, then stick to it. And don't go into new tools every day, don't learn new stuff, new tutorials, because it will just slow you down. So at some point, I really recommend that you lock your pipeline, don't learn new stuff. For example, in my case, it was geometry notes, and I never learned that, because I, I knew I have to finish my short film, and if I started working with geometry notes, I would be changing stuff, and it would just slow me down, and I would never finish it again. So I refused to learn it. I still don't know it, but yeah, well, <laughs> I'll get to that, surely. Uh, so, uh, but uh, also you can see my pipeline here. So I started with some pre-production uh, in Photoshop and some writing, then went into Blender for asset creation. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is Substance Painter. I use that a lot for, for texturing uh, in combination with Blender. I used, uh, at the end of the pipeline, after everything was assembled in Blender and rendered out from cycles, I used After Effects to composite stuff together. Uh, fifth point, I'm a fan of planning. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything too difficult, but I like to create storyboards for my short films or whatever I'm working on. And I also like to create these sheets that you can see here. Uh, I basically put their thumbnails of all the shots that I plan to do, and I dice it up into several rows of information, and uh, those then I fill with colors. It starts with red for not worked on, and you go through orange to yellow, like almost finished, you, and then you reach green at the end, and it's amazing because it's beautiful to see it fill with green. 
You can see there's still some yellow. Those are the shots that I still hate. Uh, there's, I will get back to it, but uh, basically you will, you're never finished with your project. Plan, but uh, not excessively. Always leave some room for experimentation. For example, this shot, uh, I was messing around with mega scans, just throwing stuff into Blender scene, and then I like put water in there and look kind of nice. So I figured I have some boats, I can put it in there as well. Uh, and then I finish up lighting, and what started as an experimentation for one afternoon is uh, one of the favorite shots of the short film for me. Uh, and that really helped me push new, fresh energy into the project, uh, and I cannot recommend this enough. Try to, at least, like, every now and then, try to do something that you did not ex accept, uh, expect that you would do, and it will help you in the project, ultimately. And then go back to the plan. So, yeah, and uh, if you have big projects that you're working on on your own, it also has this hidden adventure, uh, this hidden plus that you can jump from task to task and always keep it fresh. So that's al also something that can help. If you're fed up with one thing, jump to another and then return to that previous thing. Optimize, yeah. I learned it the hard way. Uh, basically, when I started rendering my shots, I realized I cannot render my shots because uh, I was using 8K resolutions for textures and 4K. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I learned that I have to optimize a lot and I recommend that you learn it beforehand, not, not at the end of the project. Uh, Blender is fortunately very good with poly count, so that wasn't much of an issue, but uh, optimizing your texture resolutions is, is a crucial point. And when it comes to optimization, it's also good to use asset libraries or anything that you can buy on the internet uh, that will speed up your workflow. For me, it was, uh, of course, Megascans. I knew I will have a lot of natural assets there, so I, I used Megascans a lot. I used some uh, stuff from Kitbash, that the, the Roman Empire pack, and I just uh, edited it so it looks like Greek stuff. Uh, Blender, is <laughs> Blender is, of course, uh, uh, famous for its add-ons, so I use them a lot. I cannot recommend these three enough because they help me fill my scenes with lots of vegetation. So Geoscatter, Botanic, and Vegetation, they save me months of time, I think. Don't forget to invest in Render Farm because rendering is a very, very long process, often, unless you're working in, with Eevee and that Everything is amazing with Eevee because it renders very fast. But in cycles, it can actually be a major cause of you never finishing the project. Uh, in my case, I didn't really invest in Render Farm, but I was able to string two computers together. You can see my workstation here. And while I was working on one computer, I was sending the data to another one, and there it was rendering. I think if I didn't do that, I would still be rendering uh, some of the shots. So uh, yeah, again, it saved me months of time. Ninth point is something more about motivation. Uh, this point helped me a lot, uh, because if, if you're working uh, alone on a project, it can get quite lonely. And then, uh, yeah, you find yourself crying in the corner <laughs> alone, I, nobody to help me. And then when you start talking about it with your friends or you start uh, sharing your experience and results on social media, there may come a magical point where people start actually asking, when is it going to be ready? And uh, when do you post next image? Or uh, stuff like that really helps you in your efforts. And uh, it brought some fresh energy that I needed at certain points of the project. Uh, also, what was amazing was that uh, gradually I started uh, working on tutorials uh, connected to the Heroes of Bronze project. So even before I was finished with the short film, I was able to teach some people uh, my workflows, and they were able to use it on their projects. So that's, that's always nice to hear. And 10th point is knowing when to stop, because uh, I'm one of those people who could work on the project forever. Uh, I'd be the first one to admit that there's uh, lots of flaws. I, I hate some of the shots for their animation, close-up fa facial animations. Uh, also, the dynamics is something I have to improve a lot in future. Uh, but at some point, I realized that done is better than perfect, and I had to stop. I, I set myself a deadline, and I stuck to it, even though you could see in the, in the Excel sheet that there are still some shots that are yellow. So uh, done is better than perfect, and really force yourself to finish your project to a certain date. And that's it. Uh, that's the 10 
most important things that I think helped me uh, in major way on this project. And because of it, I was able to finish it. Thank you for being able to present it to you. And thank you, thank you. I should, I should, I guess I should change the logo of Twitter at this point. Uh, but yeah, so here you can see the social media links if you want to follow the future of this project because I plan to continue it. And if you want to learn my workflows, there's a lot of it on CG Boost. I, I have my courses there and on my YouTube that you can see in the middle. Uh, there's lots of breakdowns. So more technical stuff is on my YouTube. But thank you again and enjoy the rest of the conference.